I'm Estelle. This is Musker Academia. Today we're going to be going over the parts of a sentence or parts of speech, part two. In our last video, we went over the first four parts of speech, though this is in no particular order. In this video, we'll be going over the last four. Adverb, prepositions, conjunctions, and interjections. An adverb comes from the Latin adverbium. It means word addition. An adverb is a word that describes a verb, an adjective, or a word that already describes a verb or adjective. Short version, an adverb describes a verb, adjective, or another adverb. Adverbs answer the questions how, when, why, to what extent, and under what condition. For example, the zombies cannot come indoors. So in this example here, indoors is our adverb, and it's modifying come, the verb. Where can the zombies can not come? Indoors. The rarely competent Googler from Botswana on maps. Rarely is our adverb, and it's modifying competent. How competent is our Googler? Rarely, which is a little concerning. He will fly very soon. This is a cool sentence because we have two adverbs and they're modifying different, different things. He will fly when? Soon. How soon? Very soon. Thankfully, the disease died and Lex did too. Thankfully is modifying this entire phrase. We're thankful that the disease died. And Lex did too. Too is an adverb and it's modifying did. Lex did what? Lex did too. Prepositions come from the Latin prepositio. This is another good opportunity, opportunity for me to remind viewers that I do not know how to pronounce Latin. It means putting before. A preposition is a word or compound word that exists only when attached to a noun or pronoun in order to answer which one about a completely different noun, or how, when, why, to what extent, under what condition about a verb, a completely different adverb, or an adjective, which makes this whole preposition thing about as clear as mud. Let's get to some examples. So prepositional phrases can be used as adverbs or adjectives. And basically prepositions tell you if you can say anywhere a mouse can go or an airplane in relation to a cloud, most likely you're working with a preposition. This is what I mean, is you can ask yourself, can a mouse go behind a desk? Yes, well then behind is a preposition. Can a mouse go in a desk? Yes, in is a preposition. Can an airplane go under a cloud? Yes, under is a preposition. Can an airplane go before a cloud? Yes, before is a preposition. This does not always work, but it is something just to check for some of the easier and more recognizable prepositions. There are also some great prepositional songs out there where it helps helpful to memorize some of the most basic prepositions. Uh, and the songs are great tools to use. Uh, the links will be in the description. You can look for those there. And I will not be seeing them to you because there are people who can sing much better than I can. Examples of prepositions. Jack hid under the couch. Hit, Jack hit the conch under the decapitated head. Under is a preposition. A lot of times teachers or whoever is telling you how to do this, because normally this is not done for fun. Uh, when you're working with prepositional phrases, you'll put parentheses around it, and then you'll have the preposition identified some, in some way, and then the prepositional, the noun of the prepositional, noun of the preposition identified. So noun of preposition um, generally is the first noun that comes after the preposition. Where's the conch? Under the head. Decapitated is just an adjective describing head. Everything is in the cloud except my research paper. So in this case, our prepositions are in and except. This is a really, cloud is our noun of the preposition. Whoa, there's a crazy circle there. And that's not disappearing. <laughs> um, and paper is also, is also a noun of the preposition. Uh, but this phrase here, this clause here, excuse me, is a good example of when you have a preposition which is not um has cannot work with our examples of anywhere a mouse can go or a play, plane in a cloud because except well a mouse can't be except a desk and an airplane can't be except a cloud yet except in this case is still being used as a preposition our last example is we are in the end game in is our preposition and end game is our noun of the preposition Conjunction is our next part of speech. It comes from the Latin conjunction. It means union, which makes sense because it's unioning. It's bringing together two uh, parts, identical parts of speech or a group of words with a meaning that is being compared or contrasted with another group of words, which again is as clear as mud. So let's get to some examples. Conjunctions are usually thought of as the fanboys for and nor but or yet so. However, please note that for, as a fanboy or a conjunction, is unable to connect identical parts of speech. What I mean by this is you can say the cat and the dog went for a walk. You can't say the cat for the dog went for a walk. Doesn't work. 
There are also what I like to call partners conjunction, conjunction partners. We have either and or, which generally go together, neither nor, both and, and one that is most often forgotten, not only, but also. For example, Sam walked the dog and Dean jumped in the bed. Our conjunction is and, and because these are two independent clauses, which that term is explained in a later video, we have comma, very important, comma, and, that's our conjunction. Neither Juliet nor Lady Macbeth thought things through. I call this an unexample because normally when we think of conjunctions, we think of joining two independent clauses. We think of something, comma, and, something, comma, but, something, comma, yet, or something, comma, you get the idea. However, in the second example here, we don't have uh, two independent clauses. We don't have two a sentence that is made up of two sentences that a sentence that is made up of words that could make up two sentences. We have a conjunctions that are joining two subjects. Juliet is our first subject and Lady Macbeth is our second subject. This is perfectly fine. You use it all the time. When you say the dog and the cat walked and is acting as a conjunction for two subjects, but we just don't think of conjunctions that way, which is why it's called an unexample, but it's still an example. Our final example is, I played seven hours of Fortnite, yet I still don't know why my sister shouts 14 every time I play. This is another example of two independent clauses being smushed together. We have that comma, so important, and then yet. Introductions are a lot of fun. It comes from the Latin introduction. It means fling them on, which kind of makes sense because when you have an introduction, you fling it out into the air. An introduction is a word that expresses meaningful emotion all by itself. For example, great, hallelujah, muskrat, oh. Let's put it all together. Fortunately, not only my mother and I, but also little boy Blue walked to the store and we all got ice cream cones, but Bo Peep looked for sheep. This is one long sentence. All right, so we have fortunately here, which is acting as an adverb and it's modifying the entire phrase. We also have, oh, sorry, the entire clause. We also have not only, but also, and that, those are our conjunctions. Our subjects are mother, I, little boy blue, and then when we get to this comma and then and, we say that this is another conjunction, so we're just going to cut this off here and work with this first independent clause. Uh, so we talked about our subjects, here's our verb, walked, and then to the store, we have a preposition, as well as the noun of our preposition, store, and that, for the most part, diagrams are first independent clause. Get to the second one, we have our subject, we all got ice cream cones while Bo Peep looked for sheep. So looked is our verb in the second part here, for sheep is the noun of the preposition, Oh, sorry, is a prepositional phrase. Sheep is the noun of the preposition. For is a preposition. Uh, we all got. Got is our verb. All right. So this is not completely diagrammed, but from what you know, this is what should, for the most part, make sense. And further, in later videos, we will go more into uh, how you put, make sentences and put them together and what all the clauses and all that means. But for now, if you could just understand the basics of pulling the sentence apart and identifying these major parts of speech, that would be great. One last note. And here is also a conjunction, even though it's just joining mother and I. That is a good definition of a conjunction um, and another example. This is Muscat Academia. See you later.